You don't just get family feasts out in restaurants. Cooking at home is really joyful and get the whole family involved. I'm Jeremy Pang from School of Wok and this series is all about staying in to eat out. I'm gonna show you how to make extravagant yet healthy meals at home for your family and friends. The recipe for this episode is a wild rice nasi lemak. We're going to start with the wild rice and wild rice has all that husk around it so it takes a little bit longer to cook but it keeps all the goodness in. So it's going to take about 30 to 40 minutes to cook this rice up but it also needs soaking. The longer you can soak it the better for at least an hour though. So once your rice has been soaked then you can start cooking it. So rice is in, I've got some chicken stock and some coconut water here, which we're gonna flavor the rice with. So you wanna bring that to a boil on a high heat first, make sure it's covered with a lid, and then right down to low heat, and it's gonna simmer away for at least 30 minutes, possibly up to 40 minutes. So right onto the curry, I'm gonna start with the spices, and I've got some whole spices over here. That's cumin seeds, coriander seeds, some little cloves here, just a couple of cloves is enough, and then some cinnamon bark and some chilli. The chilli powder we'll leave till later. The spices always must be tempered, and tempering means that you sort of sear the spices nicely first. Avocado oil, keeping it nice and healthy, so you don't want your heat to be too high. It's on a medium heat to start off with. All the whole spices are going in. That's the cumin seeds, the whole coriander seeds, and then your clove. You do have to be careful with your spices that they don't burn straight away. So just look after them before you do anything else. It takes about one to two minutes of just sort of cooking this up before we add your onions, ginger, garlic, any other things like that. So my chilies, if you don't want it over spicy, but you want the flavor of the chili, then the little trick is just to open them up like so, and you'll get that flavor into there. And they can go straight in with your whole spices. And then I've got some kaffir lime leaf, which I'm gonna pop in there too, along with my finely diced up onion. Now that those spices are tempered, the onions go in, they're gonna collect all that flavor off the bottom of the pan. So you wanna let those onions sweat down for at least sort of four to five minutes before you add your chili powder and your garlic and ginger. Whilst that's cooking, my rice is simmering away nicely, so I'm gonna just pop one folded pandan leaf into there, and that'll add this nice sort of natural, almost vanilla-y flavor to the rice. My chicken, I've got chicken thigh here off the bone without the skin to keep it as healthy as possible, but still have enough fat in it to keep that flavor going. And I want it quite nice and chunky, nothing too small. Classically, you'd have chicken on the bone with all the skin on. So I don't want to shortchange anyone for flavor. Next up, we've got some garlic and ginger, everything finely chopped for this. You want all this flavor to almost melt into the curry. It's all really fresh ingredients and simple cooking. Some chili powder, still on a medium heat. And I want that chili powder to go round the onions and almost catch a little. And for a little bit of color, about a teaspoon of turmeric, not too much more. Those onions are browning nicely time for the chicken. Of course, if you're on a, a low-fat diet, then this is a great recipe for it. Just swap out the chicken thigh for chicken breast and it's got really nice lean meat in there. Still on a medium to high heat, tomatoes in. Give that a stir around. A good pinch of salt. And then you wanna cover that to allow all the juices to come out of the tomatoes and the chicken, and then lift all that flavor off the bottom of the pan. After a few minutes, the 
juices will all come out. Time for a good scrape through. Get all that flavor from the bottom of the pan and then add some chicken stock and coconut water. With the curry, you do want to let it just sit with the lid on for about five or 10 minutes before you then take it off. What I'm looking for is a nice sort of almost thicker sauce, a thick curry sauce. So last 10 minutes of cooking, lid off, and it will just thicken up, and reduce right down. So whilst that's cooking away, I'm gonna blitz up a whole load of ingredients for a very quick and simple sambal. I've got some dried chilies, they've been soaked in hot water. Pop the soaked chilies into a blender, and then you've got some onions and some shallots, some tamarind, avocado oil, a little bit of palm sugar, and a pinch of salt. So blitzing up all these ingredients makes it really quick and easy to make. All we need to do is fry those blitzed up chilies and flavor together. The palm sugar in here should start to caramelize everything up quite quickly. It, it still needs a good sort of five to 10 minutes of cooking through to bring out all the rawness of the chili. And much like the curry, it might start to stick a little, but then you just want to scrape it off as it's sticking. Meanwhile, just lift that lid off, let that curry start to reduce nicely. That chicken's definitely cooked now. Just want all that curry sauce to wrap around the chicken. The sambal starting to stick nicely on the bottom there. Palm sugar over time will start to caramelize this and it'll start to deepen the red color. Now, the traditional setup of a nasi lemak with the less traditional rice, but flavor wise, you're not gonna miss anything. We've got all that goodness of the wild rice, which is much healthier for you. So the wild rice. And your sambal. My chicken curry. It's got that nice sort of medium to dry texture. Perfect for a dish like this because you don't want it too saucy or wet that it's just gonna drip all over the plate. But you want enough sauce to go with each mouthful of wild rice. Very traditionally, your cucumber slices. I've actually got some of our home spiced nut mix in place of the ikambilis or the sort of deep fried small fish and peanuts. So everything here has been baked and super healthy with a good bit of spice. Last but not least, not just for tradition's sake, your boiled egg. Nasi lemak for the whole family, but nice and healthy. Taking a really traditional dish like nasi lemak, swapping out simple things like white rice for healthier wild rice, and then simple coconut milks and the fattier ingredients with coconut waters. Now it's time to dig in. Mm. All of this without missing out on any of the extravagance for a proper family feast. Guys, stay in to eat out for healthier, longer, better lives. <laughs>